We will have an economy where one industry produces constant capital, one industry produces variable capital, and one industry produces luxury goods. We have simple reproduction. Inputs being valued differently from outputs would break simple reproduction, justifying simultaneism in Borkevich's view. This is a surprise. Most critics take simultaneism for granted. Well, we have something resembling Marx's transformation tables. Do you see anything wrong here? Is the unfamiliar format obscuring things? Simple reproduction can't occur. Supply and demand cannot balance here. Input prices and output prices are simultaneously valued. Consumer goods are underproduced, industrial equipment is overproduced, and luxury goods are underproduced. Marx's table seemingly cannot reflect reality. There is a problem, a big transformation problem. Use Marx's premises now, not Barkevich's half-baked one. There is no more transformation problem. Simple reproduction and uniform profitability do require that supplies equal demands, but they can be equal even if the input and output prices of period 1 are unequal. Since the outputs of one period are the inputs of the next, what is needed in order for supplies to equal demands is that the output prices of period 1 equal the input prices of period 2. But they are always equal, the end of one period is the start of the next, so the output prices of one period necessarily equal the input prices of the next period. Once this is recognized, Burkevich's proofs immediately fail. Recall that the physical quantities are the same in both periods. This means that simple reproduction does occur. The reason why the value magnitudes change is that period 1's inputs are bought at their values, but period 2's inputs are bought at prices that differ from these values, the prices of production that prevail at the end of period 1. Thus, total C increases from 400 to 440 because, although the same 400 units of means of production are again employed, they now cost 440 instead of 400. Similarly, total V falls from 240 to 220, although workers once again receive 240 units of the means of subsistence, because these means of subsistence now cost 220 instead of 240. After advancing the sums of value, C and V, sufficient to obtain the same inputs as before, but at these new prices, capitalists have residual proceeds, which Marx calls revenue, here denoted as R left over from the sale of period 1's outputs, which they spend on luxury goods. Since total C, total V, and total R in period 2 exactly equal the period 1 prices of the outputs of departments 1, 2, and 3 respectively, the whole social product has been bought and sold at the new changed prices. Moreover, the inputs of period 1 have been exactly replaced, so production could resume on the same scale as before.